You're tuned in to Agriculture Today, and we start our Friday show, as we always do, with a grain market update. And we're joined with Key State Grain Economist Dan O'Brien for that update. Dan, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Shelby. Appreciate it. Starting off our conversation of what are futures looking like, Dan? Well, I give a little bit of a uh, preface to that in that, uh, you know, each week is as each week as we as we talk on these things, it's just uh, just such momentous, important times. And uh, we're in the midst of, of determining the size of the of the corn, first the corn crop, mostly in July, and now the August August crop. And uh, the futures markets have been reflecting, just as you mentioned, have been reflecting uh, general optimism on the size of those crops. And you see, you see that in the uh, Dease corn Closed yesterday um, at 496 and a quarter. Really, the the uh, important number there is five dollars. I it's below five, <laughs> you know, and and uh, and that on on the with the USD reports uh, one in just a few minutes at 11 o'clock today, and then the next one on September 12th, and and about well October November, and then January after that. So we're in the in the midst of of find, getting new crop information from the from the USDA, and we'll we'll talk about that a little bit later. But but again, that is below five dollars close, closing at four ninety six a quarter yesterday for D's is indicative of of the market uh, not greatly worried about the size of the corn crop. Uh, not, I think there's still there's still questions that uh, to be answered, but that's there for for soybeans. We've seen soybeans now. Uh, uh, at November closed at, uh, yesterday at 13, 18 and a quarter. Uh, also, you know, not $14, not 15, but, uh, but 13. And, uh, so that's, that's, uh, 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 also indicative of a market that's not panicking. And I, I would think, uh, and when we look at Kansas City hard red winter, we the hard red crops pretty much pretty well harvested, almost all harvested. And, uh, at least in in Kansas, and you, so so the September contract seven sixty seven. Again, we're we're seeing uh, that below eight dollars. Uh, generally, uh, 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 you know, and I don't know that you can say we've had a tremendous crop, but there are enough other things happening around the world, and uh, some some wheat. Uh, uh, Sounding like has been brought into the U.S. to mitigate price rallies, so you you have all of that all of that in play. I guess I and I would say from a I guess a technical or charting point of view that corn uh, on the September contract we've we've uh, again closed yesterday about 483. We had been down to about 472 uh, within the last within the last basically month or so. So we're getting down to areas that if we go below uh, uh, and, and the impetus if we have large crops come out of these reports we could go lower than that then then we uh really really have to reassess are we are we looking at 450 to 475 or just where we go for corn for and for the soybean uh situation uh again we we've closed at uh 1350 for for the september contract 1352 yesterday a little bit well about uh, 40 30 40 cents higher than than the november contract but again uh, uh the general tight situation in in the in the world well i i guess i step back a second the the when the u.s lowered our acreage four million acres made a big 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 impact on on the size of our crop and and we have in recent here recently closed down about 13 uh, uh about 1330 or so for that for that september contract historically we'd gotten as low as about a a dollar 30 or dollar 40 so we're at uh if anything soybeans have really held up at a little bit better in, in all of this than than uh than corn has but but again we'll see what the what the final numbers come out with in these reports that we have in hand and so what is the cash prices looking like in kansas um generally all the cash prices uh, at, at the elevators that, that we look at are elevator locations uh for wheat uh we, we're um uh, lowest price uh, in in Northwest Kansas, six ninety two is the highest bid in in the region yesterday. Uh, around the uh, Salina, Topeka, 
and Hutchinson Hutchinson area, you, you'd seen highs of about 742, 751 in, in, in those regions, 717 in Garden City and Columbus 723. So, you know, again, post-harvest, here we are and and uh, have have moved to that, uh, that situation. Uh, soybeans all running about the top prices running from about 1307 to about 1365, 1365 actually in Hutchinson. So again, more of an export oriented uh, bid, no doubt. Uh, grain sorghum bids, uh, you do have a couple bids in, in the state, uh, in uh, Columbus and Colby, the two polar opposite ends, you know, from southeast to northwest, above $5 for cash, 508 in Columbus, 503 in in, uh, in Colby as, uh, in that region, 508, pardon me, also in Topeka, and, and really sticking around 490, 495, something in most of the rest of the state. The core numbers uh, still, still have a premium. Uh, it's interesting that Garden City, uh, cash bid, cash basis still above a dollar above the futures of 583, 563 in, in uh, uh, Colby, so 80 over, uh, 543 in at Topeka, 60 over, about 546, Hutchinson, Salina, 514, 548. So these aren't bad historic prices. These are actually, actually historically very good prices, but they are off the highs that we'd seen uh, appreciably in, in recent months. And uh, no, no doubt, uh, uh, farmer sellers would like to see those numbers higher and, and buyers are, are, uh, are, uh, uh, looking forward to, to being able to buy at more of a moderate price for, for either ethanol plants, livestock feeders, or you name it. Dan, you indicated earlier that the WASDE report will be coming out shortly when we wrap. It will be coming out at 11. And so kind of seeing some indications of what you're expecting to see there. Um, as you and I talked before we came on the air, this is an important report. Uh, the uh, USDA has gotten input from from uh, farmers via surveys and probably use some satellite data and some of their crop crop condition ratings to come up with a number. But they, but in the September report, which will be be released on September the twelfth, uh, measuring September one conditions, that's when the USDA actually goes out in the field. So uh, this report coming up here today will, will certainly be important, uh, give us uh, an idea of sentiments. But we'll have better information be farther along in the crop in the in the, uh, in the September report than than this August report. Okay. All that said, the uh, part of the First thing you look at, size of the crop. Uh, Pre-report trade estimates are for the size of the U.S. corn crop to be projected by the USDA to be about 15.135 billion billion bushels. That'd be down about 100 and, well, excuse me, about 85 million from the from the uh, July report, again, acknowledging some crop damage in some dry areas. For soybeans, we uh, projected in July, soybean crop, this should be about 4.3 billion, uh, projecting about 50, 54 uh, million bushels less than that. Uh, Corn yields, interesting, uh, 177 was the July projection for U.S. corn average yield, 175.5 uh, for uh, for this August report. So we'll see, you know, uh, and watchers of that report will see on, on the first tick, they're, they're probably looking right at this number, you know, what what the USDA project for, for corn yields and production and, and, and for soybeans and, and uh uh, if there's if there's a lot of change, the first impetus in the market will be to react in a could be in a pretty convulsive manner if their numbers not not far from that. And uh, so with that, you take the the uh, production numbers for corn, soybeans, and grain sorghum, et cetera, uh, for weeding weeding Kansas, and then you look to what the USDA is projecting for ending stocks. And uh, for for the most part, for this 2023-24 uh, marketing year, starting. September 1 for corn uh, started already, uh, excuse me, for corn and soybeans started already for wheat. Uh, uh, the, uh, wheat started on June 1st. You you don't see a lot of changes projected. The, the one place for corn, you do see uh, that that about 80 million bushel uh, reduction in in uh, uh, estimated production showing up in the ending stocks, them being down uh, about uh, about 90, 94 million, uh, down from 2.262, <clears throat> pardon me, in July, down to 2.168. And you see the soybean number projected to be down for ending stock down to 267 million. We were at 300 million, <clears throat> pardon me, in, in July. So 
it is as it is. Uh, we'll be watching the production and the ending stocks numbers domestically and seeing where things go. We'll, we'll also have a, a, a whole raft of, uh, of um, uh, wheat uh, by class projections, be the national and the, and, and the other. Uh, hard red spring uh, up in a dry area was projected at, uh, at 479 million bushels production in July 477 here in uh, in uh, is, is the pre-report estimate for August I I think that one's probably the most at risk that and the and the white wheat number because they're again they're up in that those northern areas drought could be getting to them uh, so I, I I guess I would I would wonder about that being the most at risk area and they have the the uh, the world numbers as well and and frankly those world numbers uh, right now they'll probably follow pretty closely to what's either happening in the U S or or in uh, uh, South America. I would say though, beyond this, gosh, all you have to all you have to do is watch the ag wire and see all this <clears throat> stuff happening all over the world in these ag production areas. <laughs> More floods in in China, uh, issues uh, that are that are unsettling in the Black Sea area. A uh, uh, there there was a news release that it's almost was uh, was designed to to cause market volatility, uh, where a, a, a I believe it was a Soviet minister said to watch out for major disruptions in the grain market. Well, gracious, <laughs> with, with the, I think isn't that what we've been having out of that part of the world? And he's saying it's going to get worse. So uh, anyway, uh, it I. Uh, we'll we'll approach this, these USDA numbers with with the uh, requisite uh, attention that they deserve, but but knowing that on the on the uh, on the supply, especially demand side, there are just a whole lot of questions that have to be answered yet, and and anything but surety going forward. Overall, did you really see any big surprises there with your with the predictions that are expected to come out? Uh, um, probably from my hard red when we. Uh, perspective that there's not more uh, more uh, expectation of a, of a shortfall in in the uh, northern northern wheat crops. I uh, again they're they're dry and 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 have had have had issues up in those areas. So I, I would wonder about that. I'll be watching the Canadian wheat uh, product production number and uh, and some of their other oil seeds that they produce col canola and 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 the like to see what those come out with. Um, so I, I I and I. I think uh, just as we kind of started off our ses section with here, the um, it's it's quite possible that that uh, if we get large numbers and they're confirmed, and not just in the August report, but we get in the September report, then it's then we. Uh, uh, would have to say that well, gosh, some of our riskiness is going out of the market, and then, and then I wouldn't say we become defensive, but we'd be very watchful about about the possibility of things moving sideways to lower in coming months and in in the corn and maybe the soybean markets. Dan, I appreciate taking the time to join today and giving us our grain market update. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Shelby. That was K-State grain economist Dan O'Brien. I will link the WASDE report that will be coming out in today coming out today in today's show notes, which you can find on agtoday.net. We're cutting to a short break now, but we'll be back with more ahead. Thank you very much.